Hey folks, this 3D scanning project is going to be a little different from what I've done in the past. This is a little bit of an experiment in using 3D scanning and 3D printing to help generate a mold of a real world object. And I'm going to be making a mold of a real pumpkin because I'm planning ahead for next Halloween. This video is sponsored by 3D Maker Pro, who is running a Black Friday sale on their Mole 3D scanner, where you can get it for 30% off. And I'm working at a different desk today because this video is also brought to you by Flexispot, who are the makers of this E7 desk and C7 chair. And they are also running a Black Friday sale, and so we're going to have a little commercial break later on. The type of mold that I want to use for this pumpkin is called a matrix mold. And that typically is a layer of silicone that has the negative impression of the object in it with a rigid shell, uh, usually called a jacket or a mother mold, around that silicone. And that is there to hold the floppy silicone in shape so that you get the impression from the silicone and the flexibility of the silicone, but a rigid shell to make sure that it doesn't distort. And oftentimes that's done by laying up an even thickness of clay over the object you're molding and then putting uh, polyester or epoxy fiberglass over that to create that rigid shell. And then you can remove the clay, put the jacket back and pour silicone into that void where the clay used to be. And that creates the silicone layer. So you have the original object, layer of silicone, and then the rigid shell over that. What I'm hoping to do is eliminate the fiberglass step because fiberglass is messy and toxic and I just don't like it very much. So hopefully by scanning the pumpkin, I will take that into the computer and design the mold in the computer, then 3D print that shell and pour silicone in between. Now, I am not a great mold maker, but I do work in the special effects industry around a lot of people who are, so I know the idea of what this should look like. I think that there will be some lessons to be learned on this, but I also think that the concept is very promising. So let's get started. I'm scanning the pumpkin with the mole scanner on the turntable first to capture as much as I can. I had these tracking dots from another scanning kit that I'm going to use to help with the scan, since the pumpkin reads to the program as a lot of repeating ridges, which are hard to track without some differences to identify. Then I flipped it over and did a second scan of the bottom, and I'm going to merge those two scans together. Because the topography is kind of a lot of the same, the auto alignment didn't have a lot to go on. So I went in and manually selected those marker points as alignment points. You have to select the point you're going to change on the sidebar, then control click on a Mac where you want it to go. And you do that on both scans and let it process. The merged scan came out great. I'm not concerned about those tracking dots showing up in the scan because I don't actually need the surface detail at all for this, just the overall shape. So I imported that merged model into ZBrush, and that's where I started designing the mold. The main tool I'm using to do this is the inflate command in the deformation tab. I like to make a sphere scaled to the thickness I want as a visual guide for how thick to go. So I duplicate the pumpkin and inflate it 3 8 of an inch to represent the thickness I want the silicone part of the mold to have. This is basically that clay step. I dynamesh that so there are no intersecting areas. And now I want to have some registration keys in that silicone to help hold it into the rigid jacket. So I did another inflate and I booleaned this kind of crazy shape of what those keys should look like to give me the keys with an even thickness all around. Now I want to build out the 3D printed jacket. 
what would have traditionally been fiberglass. I duplicated that silicone subtool as one piece and I inflated it about a quarter inch to represent that printed shell. From there, I know the build volume of my FDM printer, so I designed this in parts with flanges and keys and bolt holes to fit on that printer. So now we can see the inside, and this is sort of what's happening. There's the pumpkin on the inside of the mold. The outer layer is going to be that 3D printed rigid jacket, and the empty space in between is what's going to be filled up with silicone to make an accurate mold of the real pumpkin with the 3D printed shell to support it. There are eight printed parts to make this mold, so I'm going to get those printing while we talk about FlexiSpot. Now, as I mentioned, FlexiSpot very kindly sent me their E7 desk and C7 chair to promote their Black Friday sale, which is going on now. They asked me if I would use these and talk about them, and I said, absolutely, because my old desk and chair were in rough shape. I thought it would be nice to set these up as a 3D scanning and 3D sculpting workstation, so here we are. The desk has some different options. This one is an E7 with a bamboo top and drawer and cable management tray underneath. It's a motorized standing desk, so with this control panel, you can set different height presets for sitting and standing or lock it so that you don't accidentally press a button. There's also a USB port on there that you can use to charge your phone or power a turntable. The drawer and the cable tray can be attached wherever you want underneath. I've set it up with my laptop and second monitor over here and space for scanning over on the right. The C7 chair is a nice improvement over the old uncomfortable chair I used to have. While you can't stop the chair from leaning back, you can lock and unlock this lower back support and adjust the height and tilt. The armrests are movable, which is kind of nice if you find that normal armrests often get in your way. And when you're not using the chair, it's just a press of a button to bring the desk back up to standing height. The cables are all nicely tucked away, so they're not going to get tangled up when it moves. And the movement itself seems pretty stable. If you're looking for a new desk or chair, there's a link in the description if you want to take advantage of the FlexiSpot Black Friday promotion. Back to mold making. I've got all the mold jacket pieces printed in PETG. I figured it has a higher heat tolerance than PLA, but is also still fairly inexpensive, so good for this experiment. I printed these with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and a 0.42 millimeter layer height in about 11 hours each. I finished off some white and black rolls of filament that I had, and then I printed the rest in clear because I thought it might be interesting to see the silicone inside. What I want to do now is prepare to pour the first half of the silicone. I assembled the two halves of the mold and sliced some 3 8 inch slabs of white clay to sort of float the pumpkin in the correct position, since that's the thickness of the thinnest part of the silicone area, as I designed it in ZBrush. Then I packed more clay around the edges to wall up the half of the mold that we're pouring first. This is where I realized I didn't really design my parting line quite right, because I want to make it run through one of the grooves of the pumpkin, so my clay here isn't flat like I would normally want it because I'm making it adjust from where the jacket ends to the nearest groove, but I put some keys around it and it should all work out fine. I sealed the clay with crystal clear and sprayed some release agent, then closed up the mold and prepared the silicone. I wasn't sure how much I would need, so I started with 1200 grams mixed that, degassed it in a vacuum chamber, and poured that in. As it settles, it starts coming out the bleeder holes that I modeled into the jacket, which allow the silicone to push out the air as it fills. This also lets me know about what height the silicone is at, so once I plugged those up, I estimated how much I'd need to finish off this half of the mold. Once that was done, 
I let it sit overnight to cure. The next day, I opened the mold, removed the clay, and cleaned off any residue. It's looking good so far, so I sprayed release agent, closed it back up, and poured the second half the same as the first. Now, once that cures, I can open it all up and see how it really did. That clear filament let me know that some silicone was seeping into the mold jacket, which is not great, but it appears to have been fairly minimal. I'm sure doing more perimeter walls on the print would have helped seal that off. I also realized that I should have inverted these parts when I printed them so that the cleaner side would be the inside of the mold. There's some roughness that happens from being up against the support material when it prints that makes for a less than smooth inside on the jacket, but that's a lesson for next time. The good news is the silicone part filled up correctly and the pumpkin side of it looks perfect. I'm going to cast one up in foam to see how the mold performs. One trick for painting rigid polyfoam is to spray paint the inside of the silicone mold the base color that you want on the object. This acts as a bit of a release agent on the mold, and it also bonds to the foam a lot better than painting on it after. I mixed up a batch of five pound foam, bolted the mold shut, and rolled it around to make sure the foam gets everywhere. Once that's set up, I can open it up and see how it turned out. And it turned out fantastically. The seam is really minimal and well disguised, and this is going to look perfect with just a little bit of paint. As for the mold, besides a few lessons in paying attention to parting lines and print orientation, I think this is a very promising process. It's not cheaper than a fiberglass mold because this took four rolls of filament at about $20 each uh, compared to a much more trivial cost of fiberglass and resin. And it's not faster since it still takes time to scan the original, build up the design in the computer, and then this took four days to print all of those parts. I think the biggest strength here though is that this is way less toxic than polyester resin and much less messy than fiberglass matte. I see this being most useful on smaller molds where print time isn't as much of a factor, or maybe for someone who has multiple printers going at the same time so that you can have all those parts made very quickly. And maybe it would be easier for molding something that was designed in the computer in the first place. But I love having options and different ways to achieve the same thing. The fact that 3D scanning makes this sort of thing possible is really exciting to me. If you want to get your own mole scanner from 3D Maker Pro, click on the link in the description to take advantage of that 30% off sale and to get more info. And if you want to set up your own 3D modeling and scanning desk, you can click the link in the description for Flexispot to see uh, their current Black Friday sale. They have upgrades and downgrades and all sorts of different options for accessories and desks and chairs. I'm quite satisfied with what they sent me. I hope some of you will take these ideas and run with them. I know I'm not the first person to think of 3D printing a mold jacket, so I'm sure there are better and more efficient ways of doing it. So if you come up with your own method, please let me know. And lastly, it does help me make more of these videos if you subscribe and click on those links in the description to learn more about the sponsor's products. If you like this video, I've got some projects coming up very soon that I think you'll find really interesting. So hopefully I will see you next time.